So first things first, as far as putting together engines, cleanliness is key. So make sure you have a clean workstation. And uh, I enjoy listening to some calming music, which helps. And then you take your pistons that you got from your machinist, or not machinist, your engine guy. <clears throat> Since I'm just using $160 Sealed Pro pistons, I went with the Scat Forged Rods, which are still a press pin, so he had to press them in for me. They're not bushed. No, I'm not using Bishop Buell Forged Pistons because Truthfully, I think this engine's probably going to blow up because I'm going to put it together wrong anyway, so my hopes are not very high for this. So, we'll get this in the vise and then I'll show you where how do we go from there. So you take your nice shiny new parts and you find the crustiest vise you have and wedge it in there. And then break loose these ARPs that were put on by He-Man, probably twisting the rod and causing problems anyway. We'll get onto these bolts later, but take them out, make sure you set them down where they'll get all the threads crusted up with a bunch of grinding dust, yank that off of there, and then you go over here and you grab the finest $38 Napa sealed power bearings. You slam them into your $370 connecting rod. And then what you want to do when you get the whole engine together is you want to uh, check with this plastic gauge for your bearing clearance. We're not going to do that. Get those, those put in there finger tight where they're going to fall out later. Probably in the grass somewhere never to be found. And you flip it around, stuff her back in the old crust vise, and then you get your rings. So you start from the bottom work your way up. First you want to drop it on the floor make sure it gets all crusty. And then if you look at the oil ring, See that little lip? That's where the other separator rings, or whatever the hell you want to call it, sits in there. So you got to put the wave ring in first. And then you try and space your openings, obviously. This stuff you can look up. It's pretty common, or um, it's consistent across everything. Or worst case, look at the pistons you pulled out and just do them the same way. And it says right in the instructions to use a piston ring expander to put these on and do not spiral them on by hand. So we're going to do it that way. And then you got to check your little reference chart here as far as which ring is top and bottom ring for your compression rings, and then the dots obviously for a, which part is the top. So, I'm guessing that the ones with the paint are the lower ring. And then same thing, make sure you scratch the shit out of the piston, putting them on the wrong way, just like the instructions say not to do. And then we'll get on to the top ring. And since, if this engine actually runs, and eventually if I get around to it, I wanna turbo this, which it'll probably take five years, but I'm gonna gap the top rings, or at the very least, check them. Excuse the wind noise. So you go over here with your top ring. Reach all the way back there. 
slam that in there. <clears throat> you take another piston, some of the rings pulled off of it, and square that up in the bore. And then you check your gap. Now the spec on this is 10 to 20 thou. And usually the rings out of the box will be pretty close. Well, this block is so destroyed that a 26 fits in there nice and perfect, which is about what I wanted to gap them to anyway. So, good enough. And I don't think I showed you guys, but this is my piston ring file. No, I'm kidding. Legitimately, I actually did buy a piston ring file because I figured I'm going to be blowing up engines for a long time. So, it's literally just a diamond wheel. And you lay this in here. This helps if I actually film the thing. Hold that and then just grind away. And then what you do with this is you take it and you grind away way too much. And then cylinder one piston is actually a 30 thousandths gap because you uh, didn't realize how abrasive it was. But you slam it together anyway and hope it doesn't blow the oil cap off. So once you've gapped it, or at least checked it, same thing. Oh yeah, you gotta make sure you get all the grimy old dust from when you dingle ball the motor on there. That's always good. Break in. Alright, and then now you're set up. Now obviously I did this dry. I'll probably soak these a little bit before I put them in. And then I'll just set it over here on the floor with all the other ones where they can get all sorts of more dust and crap in them. And then once again, sorry about the wind. What you're supposed to do is use soap and water and a brush and scrub the bore so you get all the abrasive material out of there from when you used your carbide or whatever the hell it is ball hone. So as you can see that's what I'm doing right now before we uh, lube the pistons and the bores up with the finest 1540 Rotella and slam this bitch together. You know what's funny I was watching that Netflix show F1 Drive to Survive which is a good watch I'm not a huge F1 guy, but just all the shit that they go through is worth watching. And I never thought about it, but Ferrari, one of their big sponsors in F1 is Shell. Do they use Rotella 1540 in them? I bet they do. Now before you just go slamming this thing back together, you want to get in here and pull all the rod bearings off the crank because that's always a good sign when they don't come out with the rod. And pull them off and clean all the abrasive crap off your journals from when you dingle ball it with the crank still in it. Even though they're all over the main bearings, you want to clean what you can. Now would also probably be a good time if you wanted to or actually cared to roll some main bearings in this. But I'll show you a quick little tip on how to check check to see if you even need them. So first we'll get this off. Oh yeah. You want to make sure you're uh, properly positioned so that all the oil pouring out of the pickup runs all over your armpit. That's a key. To now as far as checking your main bearings, obviously you can pull a cap but look how easy that turns seems good to me and what about your thrust well your spec for thrust on this engine is 1000 yep that feels about right and the other thing you can do is go in here and check how worn out and sloppy your timing chain is yep it is but we'll be sure to slam it together anyway so now what you want to do is you want to take your uh, assembly lube and lube up your uh, rod bearing. Just the rod bearing. You don't want to go crazy. You don't want to waste this stuff. This shit's expensive. Especially since I didn't pay for it. You can take your racing oil here. Unopened. Nothing but the good, high-quality, big-money stuff here. Again, sorry about the wind. There's an arrow on your piston. That goes forward. 
if you didn't know that, just look at the old pistons when you take them out. If you couldn't figure it out still, uh, I can't help you. You gotta see somebody. You take out your bolts that you loosely put in there earlier, obviously. I know, it's taken a while. You can't rush, rush for perfection with this stuff. Listen to me, what the fuck, did I have a stroke? Can't even talk. So you take these, set these over here where they'll probably fall over. Yank this bitch off of here again. They're stamped, so you know which way they go on. Again, if you can't figure that out, I can't help you. Uh, you take your slime here. All right, let's see if I can do this and make a giant mess at the same time, because that's what's gonna happen. Talk real nice to her, get her all nice and looped up. Again, you don't wanna go crazy now. We're reusing those old spark plugs and I don't wanna foul them. Take this shit. Try and make a giant mess. Oh yeah. Just fucking. And again, watch your ring gap. Your gaps. Smear, smear a little bit more of the slime ball in there. Don't worry, I picked the most windy pollen de filled day to assemble an engine. Oh yeah, you can hear the grid in there. And again, line up your arrow, drop her down in there. And then I forgot, I gotta show you guys the uh, high dollar ring compressor I got. Make sure you clean it. Remember, this is a precision operation we got going on here. No, this might not work. It's going to be a two-piece tool operation. We need uh, tool number two where... You just run this bitch in there. Of course, drop the fucking screwdriver seven times. And if this doesn't work, well, I'll get back to you. Now, it's pretty obvious that my other ring compressor was missing some parts, so I wasn't able to get that to work, so I had to go get this. Had to fight my way through a sea of idiots at the parts store. Luckily, the uh, guy that helped me was uh, his other customer he was dealing with was trying to figure out how to get an exhaust tip off of his truck, so. Yeah, I kind of had priority there, especially since he was the uh, guy behind the counter wanted to bash his head against the wall talking to that guy. So, anyway, I got it in, and then we'll go down the bottom, and I'll tell you how about these fancy rod bolts. So then you take your sheet from your scat rod book, and you take your rod bolt, and it's an 8740. So you go down to your chart here for 8740, and you measure it. That's right, measure it with calipers and this is a 3 8 by 1.6 inch 8740 rod bolt that you torque to 45 foot pounds and then you, you're supposed to spend the $200 on a dial indicated stretch gauge so that you can measure to make sure your very good quality highly expensive rod bolt isn't stretched too much because then you got to throw it out because it's so good and so strong that if it's stretched just a little bit too much it's garbage so yeah we're just going to torque it to 45 foot-pounds and put it together. You guys get the idea. You put Molly Lube on the bolts, torque them up, slam five more pistons in it and do the same. Whenever I get around to putting the head on, I'll probably try and make a video too. My phone is pretty much out of space, so who knows, but alright guys.